Okay, so uh, everything's going well. You're a popular investor. People are copying you. Lots of people copying you. Uh, you're doing big name now on eToro. What was the point at which you decided I'm going to go full time? I could do this full time for a living. Yeah. So I think it was uh, it was like May when I made the decision. I think, uh, and then obviously I had to like you know go through my notice period and stuff and like I work in an events company so I wasn't gonna like it the timing would have meant that I was leaving like just before an event so I didn't um I prolonged it a bit longer and stayed with them through the event and then left so I ended up going full-time I think in July uh if I remember right and uh it was odd <laughs> it was it was really really odd um to kind of move from that and I mean like you know even really everyone talks about this but when when you work from home as well it's it's really difficult to try and make sure that you segregate work from from home life absolutely well. absolutely um my girlfriend get, and and my housemate both get frustrated with me sometimes for for basically constantly thinking about stock markets and thinking about trading and stuff um just all of the time and i kind of just work sporadic hours uh sometimes you know sometimes I'm up until 5 a.m sometimes i'm i'm up way before the market and yeah it's just uh it, it took a while to kind of adjust and get into some sort of a routine as you could probably tell by my weekly update videos yeah. which started off very infrequent and uh, and now they're kind of a bit more regular so. they're looking good someone asked in the comments uh can you ask jay about what it's like being a popular investor um, he wants to get started. How do you get started? Which I guess is sort of just learning how to trade, yeah. really. And um, how how many copiers do you need before you can say, right, this is going to work for me financially. This can actually support me. So eToro pays off of uh, assets under management. So if you have a uh, million dollars, well, they also have tiers as well. Well, but effectively, you need to get at the elite tier, the top tier really be able to quit your job and do this full time i would nice. say um and to get to that i think you need half a million dollars worth of of money backing you from from other people. okay and can you explain a bit about how that works like i know blue is cadet. yeah cadet then yellow which is like something and then there's red <laughs> then, then champion then elite yeah all right so, okay. so you're saying basically you need to be elite you need to be at the green star yeah before so, it's worthwhile yeah, so to begin with, that takes eight months. Even if you're super, super quick and, and you're the fastest growing person ever on eToro, it still takes eight months because they have a two-month um, minimum period at each level before you're allowed to progress. Okay. So um, that that's what I managed to do. Uh, but I wouldn't. I would say that since I became a popular investor, becoming a popular investor has become both more difficult and easier in different respects so you know there's there's a lot more competition now there's a lot more really good traders on eToro um but at the same time there's also a lot more customers on eToro yeah. and there's a lot more people looking to copy and there's a lot more money on eToro and a lot more people diversifying and understanding how it works better as well so there's there's good opportunity to do it if you're a good trader i think okay um, so learn how to trade yeah. learn fundamentals learn technical analysis yeah i mean i i think the best thing to do really is to be trading to just trade on your own like i did and and kind of ignore it for a while um or or even if you're you know if you're totally new to trading then i, then I do think that copying people is a really smart thing to do because you can watch how they trade yeah. you can you can learn different styles you know liam davies does probably about 10 trades a year really <laughs> um uh, yeah he's 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 a really really slow methodical trader um even though he makes loads and loads of like predictions and calls for short-term movements and things generally speaking he doesn't trade on them too often um whereas you know uh, someone like me and mr thor for example are way 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 more active and we do maybe 30 or 40 trades a week uh, so it's more like day trading i guess um but there's lots of different styles and, and lots of different ways of analyzing markets and you can use fundamental analysis or technical analysis. So there's there's like uh, a lot to learn if you want to learn to become a trader. In terms of becoming a popular investor, I think it just comes with success really. If, if you start doing well, people will notice you, um, including eToro. Okay. You know, if people want to learn, where do they go to learn? I mean, is it just Investopedia or something like that? I was about to say investopedia is is basically the place that i learn almost everything i know um okay. that and practice for the most part um and and even like trial and error you know like i i discovered the my favorite indicator which is the um parabolic sar oh, oh, okay. I just, hold on about the parabolic sar we have a, a comment specifically <laughs> asked jay what's the parabolic sar and is it really very useful um 
I mean, I find it important because I use it, yeah. but it's yeah. as important as any other different trading um, trading tool that you could use, really. You yeah. know, moving averages are really important for some people, and, yeah. and they're not at all for others. Okay. Same as um, trend lines and channels. Okay, and so if someone wants to learn about trend lines, channels, a parabolic star, where do you send them? Investopedia. Okay. That's, that's where I learned. It will give you it will give you the quick definition, and then after that, probably it wouldn't surprise me if you can just go on YouTube and, and just search it now and, and find tutorials. Parabolic star stands for parabolic stop and reverse. Okay. Basically, the it, it draws these little dots, or sometimes it's a line depending what chart you use, but normally it's dots underneath the candles, and they parabolically catch up with where the price is. Okay. That's how it works. And so you can set how far behind it starts and how quickly it catches up and all of these different metrics. Okay. Um, but basically the idea is that you set it in a way that you can kind of see that it's supporting the price when it's moving up and that you can kind of see when it's about to flip, which is the most important bit. So when okay. it hits... Hold on. How long do you actually spend watching these charts? <laughs> I mean, I've got charts open now and I'm kind of like looking at them in between. Well, no, really, you're still <laughs> trading. You're trading. Uh, I'm not trading, but you know, I keep an I, I, I bought extra screens to keep these charts open twenty four seven. Okay, so, wow. Um I, I have four four crypto charts and four stock charts open basically all the time. Okay, um, wow. And yeah, so I can just glance up and, and see how things are doing. And it's useful because sometimes I, I genuinely just catch moves just because it's there and I glance at it and I'm like, Oh, that looks like it's about to change. So Alright, so when it comes to like fundamentals, fundamental analysis for the complete beginner you're looking at the strength of a company, you're looking at the books, you know, the financials of the company rather than just the charts yeah. and stuff. And this is something obviously you do a lot with US tech stocks. You trade a lot of US tech stocks. Mm. You know a lot about these companies. You talk about Nvidia, you talk about AMD, you use the products. Yeah. For someone who's new, um, how much would you advise that they learn about the fundamentals of a sector of the economy or the companies they're into rather than just looking at charts? What's the split there that you'd suggest? You know. So I think, um... I actually think that generally speaking, fundamental analysis is much, much better over long time periods. Okay. Um, whereas technical analysis is generally used by day traders for the most part and swing traders and things like that. Um, so, so really, uh, it depends on what your trading style is. If you are more of a, an investor, then you need to be looking at fundamentals. You need to be listening to every earnings call. You need to be reading through every report, figuring out um, how the balance sheets look, how much they're spending on this and that. Um, AMD, I think, is, is an and, and the graphics card stuff is is a really interesting field for me because um, because I use them, yeah. you know, and I, I've I've used them for ten years, maybe even longer, actually thinking yeah. about it. Um, and you know, I tinker around with them, and I, and I'm in, interested in technology. And you can see when someone makes a big leap in technology ahead of someone else. So I posted in videos video about ray tracing technology. I saw that, which is basically yeah, which is which is what they use in like you know all the Pixar films and things like that. Um, I, I posted the video about that maybe a year ago now, and then they released the ray tracing graphics cards this year. And fundamentally, you know, with, you know, a few thought experiments involved, I was like, okay, so probably their next generation is going to include this technology because otherwise, why are they showing it off? And, you know, it's, it's a big leap ahead of AMD who don't have it. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, I think for me, fundamental analysis isn't just looking at like, uh, the, the books and, and order books and, and real hard facts, but it's also a lot of thought experiments as well about where things are likely to go and what the conclusions of those those things are. Okay, so um, like if this happens, then that might happen to the assets. Exactly. Right. So, for example, at the moment, uh, I was genuinely thinking this just now when I went to go and uh, get a drink in the kitchen. Um, I went to Tesco a couple of days ago. Okay. Uh, other supermarkets are available. Of course. <laughs> and I bought, and I bought uh, a drink of water. Yeah. And for the first time ever, I bought a drink of water in a can. Okay. Um, and and I've seen a lot of documentaries recently about plastic pollution, and you know, in the oceans and all the rest of yeah. it. How it's bad for recycling. Yeah. Um, and this, I, I looked up this company that makes it. It's called Can of Water. Um, nice I've actually name. got one. Nice I'm drinking name. It. It's, it's quite nice. Um, highly recommend it. What a name. Um, yeah, Can of Water. It's a great name. Uh, and their entire their entire thing, their entire shtick is basically cans are better for recycling than plastic. Okay. Um, and I look at it, and and a few weeks prior to that, after watching the documentaries, I was thinking to myself, why don't we sell 
um, you know, juice in glass bottles? Why don't we sell wine in in cans? You know, why why don't we sell these different things in different containers? Why is it always plastic? Um, and I came to the conclusion that there isn't really a reason other than convenience and how cheap it is. But aluminium is almost as cheap and it's used for a lot of products. Okay. So my theory is that actually right now I haven't. I'm not going to act off this because I don't really know the market well enough. But my theory is that we're going to see aluminium take over. Okay. Um, and, and we're going to see cans of everything um, over idea. the next few years. Um, so in, in theory, buying aluminium now would be a good trade. Okay. Uh, although this is like not investment advice. advice. Yeah, they're, they're the random thought experiments that I just kind of think about. Um, and I just think, you know, where's this going? You know, are, are the public outraged enough? What happens if there's a tax on plastic bottles? You know? So for people who are really interested in investing, I guess, you know, get, get to know the industry you're interested in and sort of keep your eyes open, really. Yeah, I mean, again, like, a- apply the knowledge that you have in real life. I applied that that knowledge that I literally just got from going to a supermarket and I thought about what are the implications of this and the same is true with all the gaming stuff you know I play a lot of games um, and I played uh, player unknown battlegrounds and I was like how is this going to reshape the industry well traders and investors in Activision Blizzard who for the most part don't play games are going to be scared by this because they're going to think oh I know what's going to happen but realistically all it is is a game mode that's that's all that's changed they haven't created some new Absolutely. technology that can't be copied Absolutely. they're just they're just the first yeah you were playing so, a lot of PUBG about a year ago i remember that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i thought it would be funny if the end of the stream was just playing PUBG but i don't have installed <laughs> and yeah all right so people get to know their their actual industry um, is there a type of trading which is easier to learn than others? If people want to start out, is it sort of easier to learn day trading or swing trading or investing? I th- personally, I think investing is the best way to start trading. Okay, um, so like really long term trades, the same way that I did. Okay. And it's frustrating because it takes a really long time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's also the safest. And people who try and just jump into day trading generally end up getting stung pretty badly. Yeah. Um, and I mean, one of one of my theories is to to day trade what i actually enjoy you know i still stick to the things that i that i am knowledgeable about in terms of industry like the solar industry um things like that electric car tesla and and autonomous driving uh all of these are things that i care about a lot and have a, a decent amount of knowledge on um and the idea of just day trading some random instrument that i don't know anything about scares me because yeah. you just don't know what where that's going in the long term and without that you don't know when to stop day trading because there could be a massive spike one day and you just don't know you just don't expect it yeah all right is there so, any, is yeah. there anything about your 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 style of trading which after this last year you're going to alter is there anything where you're thinking i'm getting out of that yes. section of the industry or go on uh kind of kind of yeah um so i actually i think this year has taught me that i am too exposed to cryptocurrency and people are going to get I know that a lot of people already actually have started to get frustrated with me suggesting this, but I want to effectively rebalance uh, over the next six months or so how I split my portfolio between cryptos and stocks. So currently it's like a 50-50, as I said earlier, um, but I think a 70-30 or something like that or you know, 65 something like that um, is a bit more healthy because the crypto drawdown was so big that it was You're just normal. dwarfing. Um, a lot of my other trades um, and and that's saying something because some of my other trades were really pretty substantial as well like you know the, the AMD move was 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 crazy yeah. Um, so yeah I mean effectively I've I've you know I've done some analysis on my own on my own trading and I actually do this I, I work with uh, so I hired a guy called Jesse who really who lives with me <laughs> yeah and and we go through um, spreadsheets of all of my trading data and, and look at what I'm trading well and what I'm trading badly and and like the the average holding time and all of this stuff wow really uh, yeah we we only started like really digging into it over the past couple of months or so um, but it was always like part of my plan when I hired someone to kind of start doing this stuff and start self-analyzing my trading success basically and what i'm best at trading to make sure that i'm not trading things that i'm bad at trading for example so uh yeah i think i think there's there's a lot to learn from from doing that kind of stuff 